Yeah. So Brooks always used to say that God put truth in a box. He just poked holes in it and we're all looking at it from different directions. Right. He was an amazing guy. I love that guy. Um, and cone beam CT kind of like pulls that truth out of the box, right? It's like no more box, just truth, right? Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Overstein, President of Life Chiropractic College West, and welcome to another edition of our Life by Life West uh, with my co-host today, Dr. Mary Overstein. Great to see you, Dr. Mary. You too. And um, and we've got a great guest. And actually, second time around coming on the show, uh, we've got Dr. Tyler Evans, and Tyler is sitting right now in, uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, his home originally from Muncie, Indiana. If you're from the Midwest, mm. like I am, I'm from Michigan. Everybody knows Muncie, Indiana. Um, and uh, I'll give a brief intro right now, Tyler, get to them, we'll jump into it. So, uh, you know, Tyler graduated from Life West in 2011. So, we think him and his wife, Dr. Michael Beebe, uh, they've been in practice together since then, and, and they're just doing amazing things in New Hampshire. They're Blair Upper Cervical Practitioners. Um, they actually have a beautiful uh, 10-month-old daughter, Avery. So congratulations on that. Great, great time in your life. Uh, um, and Michael, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tyler has just been involved, both of them have been involved in a lot of different things. You know, Tyler sits on the board. Uh, he's president of the Blair Association, uh, sits on the board of the Upper Cervical Council for the ICA, uh, he's involved in research. He was just recently published in, uh, in uh, was it 2022? Is that when you were published? 2022, yep. 2022. Um, and just doing amazing things. He's one of the top people in the country, uh, knowledge-wise, around cone beam com computer tomography, CBCT, which he was instrumental in, uh, in ushering the college at Life West to get a CBCT unit, which we have now, which we'll get into and talk about a little bit at a higher level. Um, and he's just doing amazing things in chiropractic. And uh, along with, you know, along with Michael, along with his wife, I mean, she sits on, I believe, the board of the ICA and, and uh, you know, besides horses and all the other things, you know, in your life that you have going on, you know, the mainstay, of course, is chiropractic and and what you're doing and how you're giving back to the world. So um, I hope that, you know, gave our audience a little bit about you. We'll dive in more and, and, and find out more right now. But, um, you know, I, I, Mary, I'd like to start because I've got a question because on our last yeah. conversation that we had, you know, I, I just found it amazing on how you guys came out and educated the public about what you do, you know, and when I say the public, it could be other professionals. And I know that you do that, right? And whether a person's an upper cervical practitioner or, you know, they do, uh, that all they do is work with the sacrum, you know, it, you know, Logan basic, it, 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 sacral tuberous ligament, it doesn't matter, you know? Um, I just want to go through that because I thought it was incredible what you do. Like you're, I think you call them provider nights and different things you do. Can you share with us like even where that came from and, and tell us the mechanism of what you're doing with it? Yeah, well, I mean, I have to give all the credit to my wife, of course. Um, she's a tremendous, very effective communicator. And that really is what it comes down to when you're opening a practice is being able to educate and communicate really, really well, very clearly what you do. And, you know, I think one of the things that we did initially that helped was we picked two or three things that we knew we wanted to focus on. So if somebody said, what do you guys do? We said we correct subluxation or misalignment in the upper cervical spine to help people with post-concussion syndrome, migraines, headaches, neck pain. Like that's our that's our wheelhouse, right? So like we had just finished the diplomate program. We were the first round in 2015 for the ICA, the upper cervical diplomate program. And so we were coming fresh off of that with all these ideas on cone beam CT and how to build referral networks and speak the language of the craniocervical junction, you know, the upper cervical spine and, and using that language more in the, in the medical sense. Um, and it's, it's really been kind of the, the catapult for us is just focusing on that one thing and trying to communicate that very effectively. Mary, who do we have? We have, we have Adam Harcourt, Dr. Adam, you know, and, and yeah, 
same thing. Like, you know, he, his thing is migraines, you know, and, and yet takes mm -hmm. he's a functional neurologist, but takes care of a mm -hmm. lot of different things like you do. I'm right. Right. I'm there for wellness and kind of, but focusing, you know, on something on a niche, right? And mm -hmm. right, remember, I haven't talked about that. Well, and what I love it too is like it's like what I'm listening to you say is it's like you're you made your story simple. Yes. Like once they get through your doors, you take care of everybody and you know, lots of different people. But it's like you're just keeping the story so simple and succinct that it's easier for you to tell that story than like when we were in practice. We took care of everybody and our story was like this big story of how we can help everything and we should have just kept it simple of just like here's what we do like this really simple story that anyone can relate to or everyone can relate to yeah and if i mean if i may i i i, I know and i know you guys in your story and you guys built amazing huge practices so like y you did the work yeah and it's just a different time i think in in medicine and in healthcare where I was listening to somebody the other day and I know Jerry, so God rest his soul. And thank you guys for doing such an amazing send off for him. I, we yeah. were sad to miss it, but, um, you know, he always talked about it. It's like, you know, healthcare is becoming where we're on team. We're on a team. Right. And so like knowing our role on that team and then just being able to like effectively communicate it and then produce. Right. And that's what we do. Um, really well in correcting upper neck issues um, and then knowing the limits of what we do and like time it takes time to heal and so communicating that and like not expecting miracles even though we get miracles right but like seeing great changes and then just unleashing that on our community and, and seeing the referrals that we get from docs in the area that are like Oh yeah, you know, I have this patient that's been on amitriptyline for years with migraines and they're getting great changes. Maybe I should communicate with this doctor um and then not speaking down to them but speaking from just a place of like, hey, this is what we do. It's very simple. We correct the upper cervical spine and when that happens, uh you know, that helps the brain heal and the and the body heal via these pathways or whatever. But it's just it's keeping it really like team oriented like this is this is how we can help you help your patients and vice versa. Like, so let's learn, okay, if you're a neurologist, how, how can we learn from you and sending referrals to the neurologist, sending referrals to the neuro optometrist that we work with. I mean, that's what we did a lot initially was we sent a, a lot of referrals to people and built relationships through that. And then they started to refer to us and saw the results and then it was like, okay, cool. So this is a relationship, but it took time. You know, it, it definitely took time and man, you got to stick to your guns and you got to be confident in what you do. Um, yeah. But and yeah. It, it, yeah. It takes time. I mean, no matter what practice someone's building, you know, the, to put those first foundational years in those first, you know, two years, three years, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. fruits of the labor, once you get the tree planted and, and, and they're watered and they're growing and they're producing, you know, it's it's just beautiful. You have to maintain it and keep it going. What I love though is this, and I, you know, it's like I go back to BJ Palmer, and and it, I feel like it's full circle because when BJ was taking care of people, he didn't have this grandiose story. You know, he was doing upper cervical work, and and the sick of the sick were coming into him from the male right. clinic and other places, right? And then as he was taking care of them, people started getting the message of what chiropractic is, and then it just kind of evolves like that. But I love having that target, you know, it's just, I think it's so important. And the, the thing that you were talking about, provider nights, right? That's what we talked about mm -hmm. at the last show that we did with you three three years ago, whatever it was. Share yeah. with us about those, because I, I find that ingenious. I just think it's the greatest thing in the world. I talk about it a lot, by the way, and I give you a Michael. I know you guys, maybe you made it up, I don't know, but, but I want you to know that I, I think you did. So I'm telling everyone that you guys did. <laughs> Well, I will say my wife did all of that. Um, so Michael was actually in Seattle, right? And so we, and and I, when you introduced um, Michael and I actually practiced in separate practices, she studied under Dr. Lenars for four years up in Seattle or five years. And I studied under Darren White for four, four years. Um, so like we both mentored uh, under folks in Seattle, but just in separate uh, clinics. 
And so uh, in that time, you know, I was over in Kirkland, Redmond, and she was over in in downtown Seattle, and she had bumped into some folks. She became like best friend. Ag- Agnes Stoyitsa, we're still really good friends with her. She's one of the head paint pain management docs in the world. Um, and she was at, oh uh, goodness, what's the name? It's for Gray's Anatomy. It's the hospital in Gray's Anatomy. Um, uh, Harbor, Harborview. Uh, I can't remember the name of the hospital right now, but it's, she was the head of, uh, or like the second down pain management doc at that hospital in downtown Seattle. And, uh, they did this thing, right? So she, Agnes and these other like health minded professional i mean they were pts they were uh, physiatrists we're still friends with some of them uh via facebook and stuff and they did this thing once a month they got together and they still do it now it's still happening i still see posts about it i mean it's been probably 15 years or so but um they got together every month and they have a different provider discuss hey this is how i help my patients um yeah and then that then informs the other providers as to how they can better, you know, know how to refer or, or understand different conditions and, and things that might be coming into their office so that everybody gets better results, right? Because it's a team, right? So, so that's, did, we took it from that and right. then built it here. But did you target like specific people say, okay, we're going to get a neurologist, we're going to get a, an ophthalmologist, we're going to get based on the avatar that you were looking to you know, to target, right? Is that what you did? And then you found the the people, the right people who you resonated with, who were, you know, and then brought them all together? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, it, it kind of happened um, via just networking, like who, who we jived with yeah. better, yeah. you know, like who, who, um, was able to listen to us or was interested in, in what we had to say. And we also sought out people who weren't necessarily interested in listening to us. Some of those folks stuck. Some of them didn't, you know, but that's okay. Um, some of them have moved on from the area, but we initially sought out the uh, the main uh, head concussion doc in the area. And we were friends with, I mean, friends, we were acquaintances for a few years. He's since moved on. But what's cool about that is since then the the there's been two or three people that have taken his place, but the one that's more recent now, and I'm I'm not going to say her name, uh, but Dr. Castro in our office has befriended her really well. They have daughters, uh, sorry, daughter and son. Uh, their uh, kids are they almost the exact same age, and they're like best friends. So like, it's really cool that like we started this thing, and now the 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 other docs in our office, the associates in our office, has have taken this on to build these relationships with other doctors in the area. So like we don't even necessarily like do the networking now, but our associates are good friends with these other head of concussion in the area, head of neuro optometry or head of whatever. So it's just, it's, yeah, it's kind of taken on its a life of its own. I love it. And, and, you know, Mary, one of our daughters, you know, all of a sudden, you know, befriended a doula and, and she takes yeah. care of our, one of our daughters takes care of a lot of pregnant, you know, women and, and, Man, what happened? Like the first week that it was like she had referrals coming in on, you know, just out of the window. You know, I mean, it was just like mm-hmm. there's, they want our services when they understand what we do. You right. Know? And I love what you said because it is a team. You know, in fact, in fact, most chiropractors and especially upper cervical chiropractors years ago, when 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 Mary and I were growing up, you know, in chiropractic, going cutting our teeth. Man, you saw an upper cervical practitioner, they'd say you can't see anyone else. Yeah. And now yeah. I got we now you know, Jeff Shelton, who we're, we're both, you know, we're very close with and you're close right. with he, you know, his thing is like every chiropractor should have everyone should have three chiropractors, you know. Right. Upper cervical, a full spine, and then maybe a sports chiropractor. Extremities or, 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 yeah. or, or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, tonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah tonal. And we just gotta start looking at, at from the lens of you know, the myopic lens or looking from the lens of we all have something to offer, you know. And J- Jerry kind of championed that, honestly. I remember being in school and him talking about the profession kind of headed that direction or just healthcare in general. 
he in and that was right around the time i mean he's the one that called together the council the council on upper cervical care and and he was like hey look you know this is the future is these specialties right it's going to be you're going to be a specialty in what you do and it's the truth right so like like you just said i have many patients I, that I share with other chiropractors or, you know, b- plenty of other types of, uh, you know, medical professions and neurooptometrists, uh, you know, that, that it's not one thing that's going to get these people. Well, it's, it's multiple things. And, and like I've seen in my own self over the years, cause as we age, we, uh, we have to invest a little more in our healthcare, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, and I've seen it in myself where when I first started, it's so funny. Cause my, my wife, Michael, she, she would be like, you used to be so like, just like that, like upper cervical only. And it's like, yeah, man, I got a little older and I needed, right. you know, other things. Right. And it's so true. So, you know, it's, it's just, um, coming at it from a perspective that it takes a team. Yeah. yeah. And I, and what I hope the listeners hear is like, it, cause what I'm hearing you say is like, there's no judgment either. No. It's like the era that Ron and I came from. It was like, you know, I got myself in trouble once in practice when I put up some statement about, uh, remember Ron, like psychotic drugs. I had to mm. give a formal apology to a psychiatrist afterwards. Right. Right. But like, I love, like, uh, you could probably teach a class on this, of how to communicate with these other people, these other professionals in healthcare that you you don't even, I don't want to say you don't agree with them, but like, it's just not your thing. Yeah. But you have a respectful communication with them. Like, you could teach a class on that. Yeah. And, and I think uh, that more often than not, you know, most, most practitioners these days see the cracks in the system. And they, they know that, you know, clearly being on a bunch of medications and being really unhealthy is not good for people. It costs more money to the healthcare system. So we need to find other solutions. And, you know, I, I definitely, have, I've ha- I had our neurologist friend that we, that we became good friends with, and he referred a bunch of people in, he came in one time and he looked at my Ida Blair, uh, a poster up. It was from Dr. Clark, Dan- Daniel Clark and Drew Hall had helped help make it. And at the bottom, it said, you know, upper cervical care helps without uh, harmful drugs and surgery. And I still have that poster to this day, but you know, the, he looked up at that and he went, hmm. and I was like, yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's from the eighties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, you know, it, I th- I think it's just having a sense of humor about it and and being respectful, like you said, and and uh, knowing that we're all we're all just doing our part. Yeah, and you know the, the the interesting thing, you know, and and Tyler, you know, your generation, yeah, of chiropractors, right? You know, Mary, when like what you did with the psychiatry, you know, our generation growing, you know, growing in chiropractic, you go back to the eighties. You know, you, we had people coming in that would say, every, I had people every week come in and say, um, doc, I can't come anymore. And we'd say, well, why? And they'd say, well, because my medical doctor said I shouldn't be coming. And yep. just sit with them and talk to them and say, listen, how, tell me how you're doing. Tell me your results. Da, 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 da. Well, you know, who do you want on your healthcare team? Someone's going to, you know, not know what you're doing. Please, before you stop, tell them to come here and talk to us and see what you're doing. And if they don't want to, then you have to decide, do I want this person on my health team, right? But that was the generation, that was the times back then, you know, the Wilk trial, you know, yeah. all this stuff going on. And so it was kind of like, we were pounding our heads and it was like, you know, drugs drugs are bad, whether pushed or prescribed, you know, and th- these were things that were drilled into us, right? And yeah. yes, as we get older, we understand more and we see more. And remember, we, we just did a walk on this weekend on, on Sunday, right, Mary? We were talking about that, you know, how how our generation was like that. But the generation of students, and, and I've never asked my kids about this, but, it's you know, my badge of honor was I never took medication for 43 years. It's like, what kind of badge of honor is that? Like, you know, yeah. it doesn't show I'm healthy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't rate my health, you know, that kind of thing, though it's good not to take medication. But, right. you know, if you don't need it, right? But it's like, if you do need it, it's fine. And yeah. it's just a whole different generation, you know? And I, and I love it. I love it more than where I was because, we, Mary, we came from a defensive standpoint. We came mm-hmm. from a standpoint of, of we were truly 
truly in sympathetic mode, you know, and mm-hmm. you know, deflecting and da da da, instead of just being oh, you know, being being coming from a from not, not necessarily parasympathetic, but coming from a place of look, okay, this is what I do, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone needs yeah. to function in the nervous system, you know, especially in the upper cervical region or the brain stimulants. You know, it's like it's very simple, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it, are ready to geek out about the CBTT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say it is it is rare, but you know, I still every once in a while have that happen, but it's rare and I'm like, "Oh, okay, right. that's what they're talking about." But there's so many docs, especially the younger ones that um, you know, medical docs that yeah. uh, yeah. you know, they're very open to working with us and oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they want to learn more about Cone Beam CT, they want to learn more about what we do and how it works. So, yeah. It's a different generation. It is. And they all and they are open, you know. They are. Yeah. But let's jump into Combi. Let's talk about yes. it. First of all, on a high level, because I know that we could yep. I, I can't even get deep, but I know you you can go underground with it because you've got so much knowledge about it. You know, share with us, like, you know, about COVID. for the person who never even heard of C B C T, Combi and Computer Tomography. Yeah. So C B C T came out. Well, I mean, it's been around, I would say for the most part, for 20 years, roughly 24 years. They came out around 2000 for the dental profession. They were experimenting with it in the medical world for about 10 years before that. But um, in 2000, they developed the first like commercial machine for uh, dentists, which really took off because it, one, reduced uh, radiation dose, which is great for everybody, and it produces a 3D image. Uh, so instead of taking 2D x-rays and trying to extrapolate 3D information from that, you now have actual 3D how to either do a root canal or a, a you know a, a, um, implant, uh, right? And so that really helped the dental profession get better results, lower dose, better information. It's better for everybody, right? Um, so that was around, you know, I would say until uh, in the dental profession by itself for about 10, 15 years. And then come, you know, 2012, 13, 14, it really started to hit the chiropractic profession. And and Jeff uh, Schulten, he'll say that, you know, he was experiment. He's been working with dentists for a very long time. So he knew about CBCT for a long time before, like I knew about it or even Jake Hollowell, our, our buddy down in Brazil, he kind of... Jake graduated from Life West in uh, 2009, I want to say. Um, he did the thing with upper cervical health centers and went to Italy and then went to Brazil after that. And uh, in Brazil, they can't shoot their own x-rays. So he was talking to the imaging center guy and he was like, hey, I need uh, this view this way and this view this way and this way. Can you do that? And the guy's like, well, why don't I just take a cone beam? And, and Jake was like, what's a cone beam? And uh, the guy was like, let me show you. And and so from there, it just took off for us. It really uh, lends itself well to the Blair technique. So that's within the Blair world. It really locked in where it's like, oh, w- this is just tremendously helpful for us. Um, for some of the other upper cervical techniques, it's we have to build systems and software and like really do some workarounds with it. So it's a little trickier. It's more of an adjunct. Um, with the Blair work, it's like that's we can just do like that in our office. We just bought one and that's all we have. Um, so you know, it's kind of made its way through the profession and the upper cervical world at this point now really is is very positive towards it. And um, we've got machines in almost every state in the nation, I would say. And um, we've got a machine at Life West. You guys just uh, brought one in the last year, or like at the end of the last year, or beginning of this year. Um, and that's been tremendously helpful bringing into the schools because then it's in the curriculum. And once it's in the curriculum, then it's really part of the profession, right? So that's been that's been the big push is like get it in the curriculum so that it's kind of locked in as part of what we do. Yeah, and, and I, I, I just personally, I see it as the next, you know, I see it, it is the next imaging, you know, low, yep. dose, low dose, you know, for the patient. The views you get are incredible. You know, like you can take the odontoid off. You can, it's just, yeah. it's you know, so it's like, you know, and, and and in your world, you know, in your generational chiropractic, you know, uh, realm, you know, 
it's like second nature, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, you can move things around, you can take the, you know, take things off and put it back and do everything digitally like that, that you can see so much more on a 3D level. It's, it's really incredible. You know? Yeah. It's like playing a video. We always joked about it, but it's kind of like playing a video game. It's so cool. Um, but it, you know, it, um, one of the things that's cool about the machine that you guys got is that it has, so it's the new Tom VGI Evo. Um, you guys have the ability to not only take cone beam, but you have the ability with that machine to also take still x-rays. Um, so like a, a frontal view or a side view. Um, and you have the ability to do uh, uh, motion. So uh, fluoroscopy. Um, and so that's like really cool, right? Cause I think, you know, I think there's value in all three motion 2d and 3d. Um, and, and that, that, you know, I think the 3d is the future for sure. Um, and, and I, I think what's cool is going to be putting all of them together and being like, okay, what's really going on here? Because that's, we have these guys in our upper cervical council now that are like hyper nerds about imaging and we've got 3D and we've got motion. And it's just cool to see these ideas going back and forth, like stuff that, you know, we're, we're kind of bringing up stuff from the beginning times of developing these techniques of like, well, we just assumed this was the case. And now we're like, well, we know that this is, it's way over here. So what's in between, you know, like what's next. So it's really kind of with Dr. Brooks. Did you guys ever meet Robert Brooks? Absolutely. Yeah. So Brooks always used to say that God put truth in a box. He just poked holes in it and we're all looking at it from different directions. Right. He was an amazing guy. I love that guy. Um, and cone beam CT kind of like pulls that truth out of the box, right? It's like no more box, just truth. Right. Um, so that, that's kind of our joke about it, but yeah, it's it's amazing, and that machine that you guys got is an incredible machine, and and I'm just glad that Amy Knight, the the reveal diagnostics lady there, um, she advocated for that, and you know that's a whole new a whole new toy, so that's cool. It, it is amazing, Mary. You had an experience. You, you had you had a cone beam of your upper. Yeah, I, I was as you were speaking. I was thinking I must have said wow just afterwards, like. 15 times. I just couldn't yeah. think of anything to say other than they're like, well, do you want to just see it real quick? I was like, sure. <clears throat> I just kept sitting there going, wow. Like all these x-rays that I looked at for 35 years. And all of a sudden now I'm looking and I'm going, oh my gosh. Look, I was like, look what you can see on that. Mm -hmm. so, wait, so Tyler, yours doesn't take, is yours the one you have doesn't do motion or still? It's just, it doesn't do motion or so. It just does the 3D, just does the 3D, it, right? I know. Uh, but it's crazy. It's crazy what technology is developing every year. It just gets better and better, faster, faster. And um, so, yeah, yeah. Ours is, um, we have, uh, it's roughly the same, what's called field of view, FOV. Um, yours is, uh, it's, it's 17 by 20, I think, or, or 19 by 20. Ours is like 17 by 20. So, uh, very similar uh, field of view, just lacks that that other capability, um, those other capabilities. Is that something now that you go like, like in five years? Oh, yeah. Years, wish oh, for had. sure. Yeah. It's it's like, oh, that's the next toy to the, buy. The new car uh, came out, right? Oh, yeah, the God. new car. <laughs> I thought I had the bells and whistles and now, but I, I, I want to share something because, and I correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler, but, you know, Blair work, and I remember my very first Blair upper cervical adjustment. <laughs> I mean, I remember. Yeah distinctly i mean i was over in bakersfield california and oh yeah speaking at a program there's a whole group of blair docs practice there and i got my and then su sunday morning i went over to one of the offices got the x-rays taken looked at them stereoscopically yep and, you know and 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 we have in our museum a, a stereoscopic old old stereoscopic and if if, if uh if the if the people out there in the audience don't know that you know you take a lateral you take a you take different views you put them in these slots and then you you, you look through these these um, glasses prisms prisms and prisms. all the yeah and, yeah and there's all these uh, uh, mirrors and you're actually seeing it in 3D you know and it was very very high tech you know very cool <laughs> those were from those were from tanks in World War II they they took that technology out of tanks in World War II and developed that prism system. It's crazy. I mean, that's great. And then to see where we are now, you know, right. where you just yeah. sit down, take a, take a, you know, do a, 
do a scan like this and boom, you got it all right there. And now you can actually take things away and do whatever and have lines drawn and that, that, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, it is the future and, and yeah. you know, and you can't dispute it. There's no disputing. There's no, it's just, it's just right there. So I love it, man. I love it. And thank you for pioneering that because you know what, truthfully you are. I mean, you know, you're one of the authorities on it in the country right now in the chiropractic space. And, um, you know, the more we get, you know, the more knowledge we bring and the more we have it, just it, it, the more information we have, the stronger we could be as a profession and we could be actually showing what we do and showing changes. Right. You know, it's not just people feeling better. It's actually being able to see it and see the shift happen. So appreciate it. Hey, I want to we're, we're coming up to our time period, but I, I do want to ask you something because I know that, you know, listen, you're in practice, you know, 13 years, whatever it might be going on, 14 years. And, you know, but you give back a lot, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, I know you've got an uber successful practice, probably waiting list to get in, you're bringing in associates and, you, you know, you're very clear on what you do, but you're also, you know, like we said at the beginning, you're, you know, you're, you're president of the Blair Association, the membership association, you're president of, you're on the board of the uh, ICA upper cervical council, you know, you're doing research, you know, your wife, Michael is doing, you know, she's on the board of ICA and probably a plethora of other things. And, you know, I, I guess the, I guess what I'd like to ask is that how for younger docs, and I want to say younger, I'm saying, you know, 20 years and, and under, you know, being in the profession, you know, what message would you give them, you know, about giving back or about joining in, you know, or whatever it might be. I don't know, whatever that message means to you. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I think that um, valuing our profession, valuing, the, the miracles that we see in our practices every day, um, you know, eh, protecting that by, by showing up, by being a member of your organizations, what, you know, whatever organization you're a part of, you know, be, be, be a member, uh, support that organization through time, treasure and talent, you know, do, do what you can to give back. And, um, because it, 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 we're not like the other professions of the world that have, you know, been around for 250 years and have millions of dollars in uh, escrow funds, you know, it's like and, they, and, 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 and NIH funding and all kinds and of NIH funding. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, it's like the 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 weight is swayed more towards their organization. So we have to do extra hard work to you know, just keep things working together. And they're there. And, I, you know, it's like, I don't want to come from a negative position, but um, there's folks in our profession who actively uh, work to move things in other directions, which are totally valid. You know, I, I, I work with these docs, um, nothing wrong with the ACA, but, you know, there are some components of the ACA that have been somewhat destructive to the types of chiropractic that I do, you know, the upper cervical work, taking imaging, pre and post imaging. And um, yeah, you know, it's like, th there's just some parts of our profession that we have to protect. And if you're not there and a member and, uh, and aware of what's going on, then things can happen. And, and it, it's it happened up in in Cal, uh, not Calgary but in BC oh, they took away geez. imaging rights taking X-rays taking X-rays away yeah, yeah. you were talking about guys that went wisely. to Life West you yeah. know they, yeah you were talking about the choosing wisely program you know and and yeah. and, and you know where they what where they where they said you shouldn't be taking X-rays and they're trying to put together a, um, standards around it and then actually that mm -hmm. was pediatric it was from me medical pediatrics mm -hmm. right which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense you know you don't want to X-ray every kid that walks in your door you know. But, but you know it's yeah yeah and I hear you and I and I appreciate it because you know what we do need to get together and I don't care where someone's at in practice you know it, it doesn't mean you have to give your money you could be in your first year of practice and it doesn't mean you join the board of your local association because they'll take you because they want people to do the work just be a member pay a due pay your dues and show up but you don't have to do that get your practice going and then yeah watch it and learn and grow into it you know. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. Well, thank you, bud. Thank you so much, you know, Tyler, for all you're doing and and all that we don't know. 
that you're doing because I'm sure there's a lot that's going on behind the curtain with the you know with the wizard and uh, the Wizard of Oz and uh, um, but we're very very excited and I'm thrilled that you're a Life West grad. I'm thrilled that you carry that banner of Life West and that you know that you literally move forward. You know with Jerry Clum in your heart as you as you've mentioned a few times and with the Give You Love Serve Lasting Purpose. So so thank you so much and 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 please give our regards to uh, to your wonderful wonderful. Uh, other half, Dr. Michael, and uh, better half, <laughs> yeah, better half, <laughs> and, and, and Avery. Avery. Don't forget Avery. Avery and Avery. Um, but we're going to ask you two questions. We end our life by life West by asking two questions. Mary, I, our last guest, I asked the first question, so I'll let you ask the question. Oh, uh, okay. Thirty second answer. Whatever's on your mind, whatever comes up, boom. That's how you're going to answer it. It could change in 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 an hour. So go for it. Okay. Her. Okay. So. You're going to go back. It's the very first day, your first day at Life West, and you're standing in front of Tyler Evans. What are you going to say to him? What what advice would you give him? Oh, man. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and work really hard. Work as hard as you can at learning everything about chiropractic that you possibly can pick up. Love it. Uh, I thought you were going to say, you see that wonderful woman over there? Ask her <laughs> out. Don't wait a year and a half before you ask her. Anyway, second question. I got the second one. Same thing. Who you are right now, going back to Life West, but now you're speaking to Tyler Evans, just graduated. Just hmm. graduated. What words of advice would you give him? Well, it, it starts now. And uh, this is the biggest adventure of your life um, next to being married. Uh, but, uh, you know, becoming a doctor is going to change you in so many ways and just be open to learning and be grateful and do the, the give, love and serve, you know, and just serve. And you're going to reap rewards you, you could never imagine. And it's so fulfilling. Right. I love it. So good. Wow. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Mary. And, uh, you know, it, it was great. What a great show. Um, we'll get you back. Or actually, we're going to get Michael next, right? And then you yes. can be free and we'll get Michael on. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I also want to thank our audience. Thanks for checking in with us. And thanks for coming back week after week. And, and, and you know, through, you know, these are dropped every other week. And, and the opposite weeks are our Life West Leadership Line. Um, they've done amazing and it's only done amazing because of you, not because of us, but because of you and you spreading them and sharing them. So a lot of great information today. Uh, spread it, share it. Um, let us know if you have questions, anything that might be going on. Uh, we're going to uh, keep expanding what we're doing and keep expanding the knowledge base so that we can bring you more and more information, cutting edge information of what's happening in the profession and just in the healthcare world or in the scientific world. And, uh, for that, that just means that we have a greater responsibility, and that responsibility is really to the public to be able to bring forth everything that we know. And like like Tyler said, you know, just work hard and bring it. And and I think we've got such so much more value that we can bring that we don't know about that we're going to discover as we go forth, right, through our scientific uh, endeavors. So thank you again for being with us. And for Dr. Tyler, Dr. Mary, and myself, we'll bid you adieu and keep loving those people around you and hugging those that need hugs. And uh, just remember that you are much more powerful than you were ever led to believe in your early years. And keep sharing that with other people because that power that's within is the power that we tap into in chiropractic. So thank you. And we'll see you again at our next show. Bye-bye.